Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm gonna show you how to ferment this. This is a super simple kimchi that only takes a couple of hours to make and you can be enjoying within a few days. So I got a comment from a viewer the other day and they said, I never knew you had a second channel. So I wanted to make you all aware that I do have a second channel. All the gear, no idea. And on that channel, we explore a variety of hobbies with a particular focus in the future on fermentation and distillation. We've already covered a ginger beer recipe and in the future I'll be working on a mead fermentation video, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of what I'm doing over there on Who Chose. So today we are going to be lacto fermenting kimchi. So I'll show you what you need to make it. Okay, so first things first, we've got to prepare the cabbage. So we're gonna cut the cabbage lengthwise through the stem in quarters, cut the cores from each piece and cut each quarter crosswise into two inch wide strips. All right, so we're gonna need a large bowl or pot. We're now gonna place the cabbage in a large bowl and sprinkle with salt. We then massage the salt into the cabbage until it starts to soften a little bit. Then we add enough water to cover the cabbage. Placing a plate over the top of the cabbage and weighing it down with something heavy like a jar, we can let it sit for one or two hours. Okay, so it's been about two hours and we're going to now remove our plate and wash off our cabbage. Now I'm gonna use gloves for this because we're also gonna be making some really hot chili paste and tossing our cabbage. So I'll probably wear gloves for the rest of the handling of this. Oh, this has gone such an interesting texture. It's almost rubbery. I'm just moving this cabbage over into another pot with a colander. We're gonna rinse it three times and we're gonna let it drain in the colander for about 15 to 20 minutes. We're rinsing out the original pot that we used. The ingredients for this recipe will all be below with the quantities that you need. So now we're going to make the spice paste. We're gonna grate up some ginger, some garlic, add some sugar and fish sauce, and we're gonna add in some cream red pepper. The powdered pepper form, we want it medium hot. One, three, five. Ooh. And I'm just gonna mix that up. Okay, so for some extra color and flavor, we're going to chop up some carrots. So peel them and cut them up into like matchstick sized pieces, I guess. Add that to the spice paste. And we're gonna add some fresh spring onions from outside in the hydroponic system as well. So we'll just cut them off where we can regrow them like so. Replant these, and these are just gonna be cut into one inch pieces. So here is our spice paste, spring onion, and our carrot. And we're gonna add in our cabbage. So I'm just gonna lightly squeeze all the water out that I can, add that in to our paste mix, like so. And then we're just gonna gently work the paste into the vegetables until they're thoroughly coated. Now gloves are optional, but I would recommend using them because that spicy paste is gonna be spicy. And now we're just gonna add them into some jars, squeezing them down until the liquid presses up and covers the vegetables. So what we're trying to achieve here is lacto-fermentation. This process uses lactic acid bacteria naturally present on the vegetables to consume the sugar within the vegetables and create lactic acid. For this fermentation to work properly, it requires salt and an oxygen-free environment. And this is why we're trying to submerge all of the vegetables in the water that's been extracted from them by osmotic action because of that salt. So with the one that's less full, it's actually easier for me because I can use a full jar to keep the kimchi submerged. And I'll just close that up, put that aside. And for the last two, a couple of shot glasses will do the trick. So I'll just put the shot glass in holding the veggies down. Perfect. 
And the jars and shot glasses work really well because they're not sealed. So any pressure that builds up will have all of the sh room in the shot glass uh, and the jar to build pressure, which will mean that it's less likely to explode. So I'm gonna leave these. Um, I'll probably come along and check on them, maybe burp them uh, for about five to seven days. All right, so it has been about five or six days, the lactic acid fermentation has really taken over. There is a bunch of activity happening within these jars and that's super exciting stuff. I've come along and burped these jars a couple of times and released the carbon dioxide that's building up in them. But the shot glasses have worked really well. They've kind of given this like little buffer of air so that pressure can build up uh, without popping the tops. As you can see, there is actually some spillage and these jars have not left this spot. So I would recommend if you are going to put these aside somewhere that isn't waterproof area, just have them in a tray or a dish or something so that you catch any of the liquid that spills out as they ferment. So unfortunately, the half jar that I made didn't make it. I started eating this one at about day two of fermentation and even at day two, it was remarkably tasty kimchi. And you can pretty much eat this from day one through. I'm actually very keen to see what this six day old kimchi tastes like given the amount of activity that I've seen in these jars. And there is bubbling happening on the top of the jars even as I speak. Let's have a taste. It's got a really fresh smell. It's um, definitely got some of that ginger and the garlic coming through. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. That's a good amount of chili. That's a good amount of spice. It's like, it is, it's very much a spicy sauerkraut, except that it's, it's a lot more, I would say that it's a lot more moist than a lot of sauerkrauts that I've had. It's definitely got its own distinct flavor and character. Mmm, that is delicious. Let's get some of the carrot. Mmm, the carrot is definitely welcome in there. That is fantastic. And I know because I had, I had the half jar in the fridge, it's fantastic cold as well. This is definitely more complex the longer you leave it. And what's actually really interesting is it's not excessively salty because we added so much salt to those cabbages, but we washed most of it off. So it was only the salt that had osmotically entered into the cabbage that we get in the kimchi. This is incredible actually. I'm probably gonna make this for the rest of my life now. I'm extremely happy with this. And those shot glasses, they work to treat to sort of submerge that kimchi as well. It just creates a moat and not everyone's gonna have fermentation weights. So those shot glasses do the job absolutely perfectly. All right, well. An absolute success. Thank you for watching this episode of Who Chose? <laughs> if you're interested in fermentation, I have a bunch of fermentation content, including a really nice ginger beer recipe. And I've got a bunch of fermentation and distillation content planned. I'm just waiting for my distiller's license to come through. And then we're gonna have a whole lot of fun. Thank you for joining me today on Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time. On who chose? And maybe even all the gear. <laughs>